Hi everyone, welcome to March's update on my solar generation and energy consumption. A few things to talk about, including 5 megawatt hours. We've just passed on the first array, that's a 3.9 kilowatt array of panels connected to a Solus 3.6 kilowatt inverter. 5 megawatt hours we've generated since January last year. If we add to that the generation from the second array that we installed in September last year, that's 440 kilowatt hours for last year and another 471 kilowatt hours so far this year, that's coming up very close to 6 megawatt hours in total. Putting that in financial terms, that's 6,000 units of electricity at today's rate of 14 pence a kilowatt hour. So that's 840 pounds of electricity I've generated since January last year. March's generation has been a really good one. If you look at this graph with the dark blue line and compare it to last March, which was just under 400 kilowatt hours, we've gone way over 400. So for my first array, we got 455 kilowatt hours. I think that's the number. So considerably better than last year. And I actually thought last year was a good year. So if we then add in the kilowatt hours for the second array, this Solar Edge 2.4 kilowatt array that I have as well, that comes to a total of 716 kilowatt hours for the month of March. That's way more than the maximum we had last summer in peak uh, times of 550, 555 just from the first array. So it clearly shows the benefit of having those extra panels. That really was um, the best decision I've made so far with these solar panels and batteries and all of my electrical configuration. Adding more panels has really worked wonders. But what have I done with all that energy? That's more energy than I've ever used before. And this month has been a weird one. To start with in the month, things seemed normal. You know, there were some dull days, there were some sunny days. It felt normal. But then towards the end of the month, we had 10 days where I generated 384 kilowatt hours just in those 10 days. And I think seven of those days were absolute crystal clear cloudless skies where we generated uh, 40 kilowatt hours in each of the days. Incredible. Last year when I did these updates, I would talk in terms of how many days we've had that were greater than 20 kilowatt hours generated in the day. And if you look at that for just the blue area, then we're talking six, seven, eight um, days, and that's about how it was last year. But if you now add in the second panels here, you can see that it's two thirds of the month were in excess of 20 kilowatt hours. So again, adding those extra panels has transformed what was just a good month to an incredibly good one. So I have a huge amount of energy uh, available for me to use. But again, what did I do with it? If we look at this Solar Edge chart, which is showing my import and export, those numbers are accurate, but please ignore the rest of this graph and the rest of the numbers, because at the moment my CT clips are in the wrong place and these numbers just are not correct. So I imported for the month 56 and a half kilowatt hours. That's only about one kilowatt hour out according to the meter. So yep, 56, 57, 58, I'm in that territory for grid use for the month, which is better than any other month that I've ever had. And I exported 154 kilowatt hours almost, quite a lot, but there's a good reason for that. We're not allowed out, we're in a virtual lockdown, so can't go out for a drive, car's not being charged, just sat on the driveway looking pretty. Yep, even the Kona is shedding a tear. But with lots of spare time on our hands, plenty of time to give the car a wash and polish. And yep, still looking good, as good as new. Getting back to the numbers, the Eddy device, the solar diverter that puts energy into our hot water, that consumed 121 kilowatt hours this month. More than normal because school's closed and our daughter is home permanently now until they reopen, probably September at the earliest. Looking at our Zappy device that diverts solar energy from the panels into the Kona Electric for us, that's uh, put 163 kilowatt hours into the car and 11 of those came from the grid. So 11 times 14 pence, £1.54 it's cost me this month in March to power the electric car for all the miles that we've done. Not that we've done many miles this month of course, but I am aware that last month we ended the month with a very low state of charge. This month we're ending it with a very high state of charge. So most of that is just charging the car back up ready for when we can use it. 
plugging those numbers into my overall chart, what we can see is in red, my hot water heating has gone up. In green, car charging has also gone up. And solar generation in orange has gone up. Everything's gone up because we've had more energy available. The only thing that's gone down, my grid import energy, the blue bars at the bottom, and that is the lowest it's ever been. If we zoom in and look at just grid usage for the month of March, we can see something significant happens towards the end of the month. If you've been following my videos on the EV puzzle, you'll know that we've got a pure drive energy 4.8 kilowatt hour home storage battery installed. That went in on the 16th of March. We had a few days trying to sort some issues out and me getting used to it and uh, discovering that there's actually a fault with the battery. But uh, after that, I'm now actually able to get some very low consumption numbers. So somewhere between 0.1 kilowatt hours and 1 point something kilowatt hours a day. Next month, with luck, hopefully we'll have less than 30 kilowatt hours of grid usage, less than one a day. That's what I'd like to target. But at the moment, I'm still trying to learn how best to use the battery and how to get as close to zero grid usage as possible. And lastly, just an observation because of how many kilowatt hours we've generated for the month and the fact we now can't drive our car, it's really standing out to me that the 3.9 kilowatt array that we had was great for the house, great for heating the hot water, great for reducing your bills, you know, it's okay for charging the car, but I needed more panels. I needed those 6.3 kilowatts in total to be able to charge the car and do everything else as well. But now that I'm not charging the car, I've got loads and loads of spare energy. So if you're thinking of sizing your solar array and you want an electric car, you know you're gonna be having an electric car in the future, my advice, get as many panels on that roof as you can and get as many kilowatts as you can because you will use it even now, when I'm not charging the car, what have I been doing? Turning portable heaters on around the house instead and heating our house for free from solar energy. I haven't turned the heating on, even though it's zero degrees outside. We had a frost one day last week, and uh, when it's been decent weather, even in the sunshine, we're only talking four, five, six degrees C outside, and yet haven't had to have any heating on because of all this excess solar that I have. So yeah, buying those extra panels, installing as many as you can on your roof definitely the way to go as always thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found something in there useful whether you're comparing to your existing system or whether you're thinking of going solely yourself more updates to come on both the solar panels and hopefully the battery as well take care stay safe and stay home see you again soon Bye bye